good morning ladies and gentlemen it's always good to be with the friends from africa it's always a nice feeling i have been part of this forum for many years consecutively just because i don't want to miss out this wonderful people from this beautiful continent and i have mentioned this again and again from the time i was born i don't know what it has inspired me i always love to be part of this continent but i have to admit i have never visited not even a country in this continent so far well uh, i am ranjit kingston uh, i am a student here and i been part of the department of education for a while and i am writing my dissertation now and also i have my other fields of interest uh, i have uh, a special interest in counseling and psychotherapy uh, that was one of my masters uh, along with my wife we did this in india and uh, today our focus will be in that area uh, if you are going to talk to me you may have to have somebody close to me to tell me what you're saying because my ears are blocked and i can hear only myself so during the question and answer time maybe my moderator should be next to me and tell me what the question is all about thank you well africa mental health psychotherapy the seventh day adventist perspective now this paper is an empirical study uh, hence not much of uh, theoretical underpinnings to support it Uh, not necessarily i have left it out but i have left it for the second paper this afternoon so if you have any questions regarding some of the theoretical uh, basis we will have it discussed this afternoon uh, how well without wasting much time let's move on the rationale for the study as you see in september 2015 the un general assembly recognized for the first time the mental health and substance abuse as the global priorities meanwhile the african countries dedicated on an average less than 1% of their health budget to mental health compared with 6 to 12% in europe and uh, if you ask me the reason i don't know why and these are the elected people from your continent so we need to find out why it is so if you look at this uh, future of economic forum uh, there are various aspects that contributes to the future of economic progress in the continent of africa and one of the area that contributes is about the health care facility uh, it is very important for us to understand health care plays an important role not necessarily only in taking care of the people of the world but also to go ahead with the economic conditions of the countries in the continent of africa now based on this economic forum they say these things how is mental health related with the economic conditions of a continent first mental disorders are brain disorders simply we need to understand that secondly mental illness are tied inextricably to the physical illness beyond the brain so it starts with the brain and it goes beyond the brain then mental illnesses can be as fatal as physical ones too and lastly effective treatment can be low cost low intensity better stop it there than let it grow further and have a bigger cost in your expenses back in your government now Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease and that leads to dementia are called to be three major mental disorders especially in the continent of Africa. Now Africa has the potential to handle and eradicate many diseases as such. However, according to Soso and Kabore in 2017 it says lack of interest or they do not have realized the importance to prevent brain disorders and associated diseases such as neurodegenerative diseases has led to still the allocation of lesser budget to take care of these type of diseases in the continent of africa 
na as you all know alzheimer disease is what is an irreversible progressive brain disorder people slowly lose their skills and they forget uh, things and uh, parkinson disease you know about uh, the simple symptoms of the hand keep on shaking i know they cannot do motor skills very uh, you know you know in a better way as they do it before there are four primary symptoms of that is trembling of hands arms legs jaw and face and uh, these diseases are highly common in the continent of africa and that leads to dementia where dementia is an overall term for a set of symptoms that are caused by disorders affecting the brain now symptoms may include memory loss and also difficulties with thinking problem solving or language severe enough to reduce a person's ability to perform as a whole you remain as a human being doing nothing about what you are or nothing about what you are capable of now here is an alarming statistics it says in africa in 2015 there is 4.03 percent this is the number of people with dementia and the proportion that increases as you see there it says by 74% in the next 15 years it could increase more highly likewise in the next 35 years by 291% now for the different parts of africa different parts of africa uh things are different way how people have seen it and as you look into the chart over there you can see over there a uh, 3.1 that is in the south saharan africa the west part uh it's estimated to be prevalent of this disease 3.1 but at the highest side you see in north africa or in the middle east part you have the 6% of having this dementia now who are part of this disease are the youngsters being part of this no exactly the older generation those who come at the level of age of 60 and move on slowly they ca catch up with alzheimers and parkinson's disease and they get into dementia now here are some of the statistics it talks about different parts of africa as you see over there and uh, you have it over here in the west africa this is about number of people who are dead per 100000 Uh, for the disease of alzheimers and also parkinson's disease uh, for the different countries you are you can see over there and the, the next one is for east africa and uh, they don't have it for seychelles i don't know the reason why or they didn't get data for it but seychelles is a wonderful country so i don't think you will get it so well let's move on in central africa you do have and uh, this is in southern africa now i am bringing down the topic from these three major mental disorders to depression now what depression has to do with dementia now if you ask health professionals they say there is no direct no causal effect relation with dementia that's true however depression do play a lot of role alongside with dementia Now if you see there the signs of depression may be an early sign that dementia is developing but it doesn't mean because you are depressed you will end up with dementia there is a possibility and there are researches that have shown there are high possibilities of such uh, you know relationship but it is not fully proven and also you say alzheimer's a disease that causes 60% to 80% of cases of dementia is also has having a strong link with depression now alzheimer's and parkinson's comes under the umbrella of dementia and alzheimer's one of the reason for having alzheimer's is closely linked with depression hence there is an indirect relation to dementia however it is not necessarily it is the cause for dementia and also it says in uh, dementia australia 2017 dementia and depression can occur separately or together sometimes it can be difficult to distinguish between them because the signs overlap one example the sign that is not so not even closest 
the idea of committing suicide. For a person who goes through depression, he get, develops the thought of committing suicide, but not with a person who goes through dementia. Likewise, there are many other comparisons between dementia and depression. Though they are different, they are closely related. And it says 40% of Alzheimer's patients suffer from severe depression. This is the post effect. This is after being part of this Alzheimer's disease, they go through severe depression. Now there are three general groups of people who suffer from both depression and dementia. Now they are the people who have battled lifelong depressions. They are going to anyhow experience dementia. Secondly, people who develop depression after memory loss or Alzheimer's and dementia, these people may experience depression as a reaction to these changes. And third one, people who develop depression, anxiety or a change in behavior like being short fuse, agitated or aggressive and then a short while after develop dementia. So now what is this depression? According to William Styron in 1989 classic, he says, depression is a wimpy word for a debilitating condition that is marked by hopelessness, helplessness, and dread. Now, in Africa, people have been found with a lot of symptoms of depression, and how do they handle this? And one of the interesting uh, story is about uh, the part of Senegal. Now here, they considered it to be uh, the spirit that has got into the person, that makes the person uh, depressed or downhearted. So what do they do is they have a village therapy session. And in that, they stripped to a loincloth, rubbed with millet, and they listened to the tape of chariots of fire, holding shamanistic bed with a ram, being covered in blankets and sheet with dancing villagers, stripping naked, being drenched with the blood of the ram, and two roosters drinking a coke, being wrapped in the intestines of the ram, buying little bits of ram, receiving the millet wrapped in the paper, and it goes on. This is according to Ebersol 2014. Now, these uh, pictures is also depict how they go about with the village therapy when they are found to be depressed. And uh, the villagers come together, and here again the, the Senegalese dance where the millets are being thrown onto the person to get the depression away from that person. And uh, one more example in another country, maybe in the eastern uh, Saharan Africa, uh, is uh, Zimbabwe. Uh, if I am mentioning it wrong, is it east or south? It's still east, right? Zimbabwe. Uh, south, south, okay, thank you. Now, in south, there is no exact meaning for the word depression. It was considered to be something, something wrong with the person. Now, Sir Mamberiri walks in as he hears about Zimbabwe, and I particularly chose these examples because I know there are many people from Zimbabwe here. Now, it says that there is a word which is very quite close to the concept of this depression is Kufunji Sisha. Am I saying it right? Uh, can you try reading it? K U F U N. Okay. Well, as I said before, what you say I cannot hear, okay? So I believe you said something. And here, this is about a belief that the supernatural factors had caused these symptoms that is quite close to the depression. Now, I am not trying to present to you an Africa who do not have any scientific or medical knowledge. If you have misunderstood me, I'm sorry. I'm not presenting in that way. However, these are the realities in some of the parts of Africa where they have understood mental health in a different way. So that's where I am projecting on. And here is an example of one of a non-governmental organization working with people who go through depression and trying to revive them. And you have some statistics underneath which you can look at it. But since it's an empirical study, let me move on faster. 
psychotherapy is considered to be one of the most significant therapy or a remedy for people who undergo the situation of depression. According to the research of 15,000 studies conducted, there are seven therapies from psychotherapy has been considered to be the most significant one that can cause a reversal process in depression. Now based on that, let's move ahead and study about what is the psychotherapy. Now psychotherapy is the informed and intentional application of clinical methods and interpersonal stances. Now these are derived from psychological principles for the purpose of assisting people to modify their behaviors, cognition, emotion, and or other personal characteristics in them. Now, as you know, counseling and psychotherapy most of the time goes hand in hand. Now counseling is for short term. Looking at the issue, a person comes, and you have s the several sessions trying to solve the problem with the person and your counseling session is done. However, psychotherapy goes beyond the person and it have a control or to have an interest over the person and even it goes six months beyond once the session is done to do a complete backup session uh, with the person. Now, as you see, a relationship between two or more persons in which one person seeks to advise, that's a counselor, and another person or persons who go through the problems of life or the counseling in the counseling thing. And now there are different uh, major types. I have mentioned 10 of them. There are much more than 10. Uh, these are the different therapies. Uh, in the afternoon session, we will go in detail in that. Uh, these are the different therapies which are available for sitting with people who go through different traumas or different kinds of depression, not necessarily only depression, other mental challenges who can be treated using psychotherapy. However, as someone mentioned earlier, there is a concept of stigma. Why would I talk about this to someone if I am depressed? And this is all over the places. Now negative responses from members of society and threatening individual self-esteem and self-efficacy -effic has brought out the stigma in people not to go and approach a person who can help them. And also, uh, according to Sartorius, stigma extends to the institutions, healthcare workers, and even mental health specialists who provide treatment. Why? Because you are considered to be of low regard. Even as a person who can provide that facility is considered to be part of a department who deals with such cases. Just for an example, uh, three months back, when I traveled back to India, uh, my sister did travel at the same time. So I asked my sister, where, where are you putting up this night? She said a particular place uh, called as, uh, I think, uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, it is related with a place which has a famous mental hospital. So she said, I'm putting up over there. Then I said, what happened to you? Are you sick? Why are you there in that place? You know, mental hospitals are not considered as a high regard one. But, you know, even if you are a part of this, they say, oh, something is wrong with you. That's how the stigma has been, you know, circulated or uh, being developed all over these years. Now, as we move on, there are also other reasons for having uh, other considerations for not to take for further help, not to take the victims or those who are suffering from depression for further help. Now there is a theory called psycho, social psycho uh, theory, okay, and this has been extended into social, cultural, spiritual theory. Now this is the theory or which is this study is based on because we are bringing it to the spiritual element and trying to find out how as Adventists, we look into this concept of psychotherapy as a treatment and also depression as something that is a mental illness. Now, in order to apply this biopsychosocial approach, there are a few things we need to do. 
Uh, number one, recognize the relationship are central to providing health care. Use self-awareness as a diagnostic and therapeutic tool. Elicit the patient history in the context of life circumstances. Then, which area are we dealing with? And lastly, provide multidimensional treatment. Now, these are the procedures in this particular therapy. And how Seventh-day Adventists look into it. Now, as Ellen White admonishes things that disturbs anything related with mind. And here, uh, White talks about anything that disturbs the mind should be looked into because mind is the integral part of everything that you do. However, she was against uh, mental health because her context in which she was against, there were few therapies which were existing that time. One was mesmerism and another, another one was phrenology. Now this has more to do with uh, Satanism and bringing more of spirit concepts in terms of treating people. Now during which Ellen White did mention that these are completely the work of Satan. However, this has been later on misquoted and studied in different contexts and understood that, oh, as Adventists, we have nothing to do with, uh, you know, mental health practitioners or physio uh, I mean, psychotherapists or psychologists or, or such. But uh, thank God that uh, later on in the 1977 General Conference, uh, uh, particular suggestions was recommended and accepted that these health-related programs should be highly regarded and also to understand how God himself has shown in a scripture how people have to be treated, not necessarily him directly, but using some agents to be involved with them to get rid of those mental health problems. Based on that, few questions were chosen right for this study. And this is a study which is still ongoing. I have not completed because still responses are coming. Because I have sent uh, some of the structured and semi-structured questionnaire to uh, the four or the five parts of Africa. And still the uh, results are coming in. So whatever has come in, with that I have made some results. But this study is ongoing and it could make a difference maybe in the later, depending upon the responses that we get. Now these are three research questions. How do Adventists perceive mental health in Africa? What is the perception of Adventists to attend to psychotherapy practice for mental illness like depression? What are the uses of psychotherapy in African context for an Adventist? It is a qualitative approach with exploratory case study design. Semi-structured interview questionnaire has been used and sent. Literature and narratives for triangulation is used. Population assembly for taking all five regions of African continent. Even some of the representatives from those regions in IS2 uh, contributed to it. Data collected through Google Form Questionnaire, first and second cycle of coding to arrive at themes. Findings were compared and contrasted with literature, then discussed, then recommendations were given. Now, th since it is ongoing, this was done for whatever data we have received, but also will be done for the future data coming towards it. Now, for the first question, how do Adventists perceive mental health in Africa, uh, these are the themes we arrive with. Uh, awareness, needs, drug abuse, faithless life, loss of belonging, disorders, demonic activities. What does it mean by all these themes? They see mental health as an area that they are not completely aware of. They are the audience, the Seventh-day Adventist members of our church are requiring for more of programs which can help them be aware of what is this mental health issues all about? What are the area of taking care of these type of mental health issues? Likewise, they did mention why do they go through mental health challenges and illness? They say there are various needs in life which are not met, hence they get into it. Drug abuse, then their faithless life, loss of belonging, disorders, and also they did mention there are demonic activities that can bring them, bring about some mental health issues in their life. Now, maybe to choose one of them, I have the sayings of every, uh, everyone for all the themes, but I just would like to use maybe uh, one of them. 
Okay. Now here, one person mentioned uh, the respondent number six. I had suffered deep sense of loss after I lost my wife three years ago. However, the scar sometimes brings the memory of the painful loss. Now, these type of uh, the agony in a person's life cannot be just taken for granted. And uh, the person has to be helped, assisted, in seeing how a person can go about. If not, the complete process of reversal cannot happen in their life. They need someone to do it. Yes, we pray for the person. God will take care of them. At the same time, we need to also support the person to come out of such a challenge in their life. Now, for the second question, uh, what is the perception of Adventists to attend to psychotherapy practice for mental illness like depression? They said, before even going to any psychotherapist or any practitioner, first of all, we need to follow what God has given us through instructions from the scripture, and we need to pray about it. Then, go ahead for the treatment. So they say there is a precondition before you go for your treatment or any therapy. Then, after going through it, you have to have a responsible lifestyle and also be responsible for everything that happens then on. Um, and here, to follow God and pray, this is from one of the respondents. The human quality is to just to live for two things, for the glory of God and for the other's benefit or serving others. And 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31. And going to the third question, what are the uses of psychotherapy in African context? These are the three themes developed. Address emotional and mental challenges. Secondly, it is a therapy treatment. Thirdly, new start for hope. Now, I really appreciate uh, Dr. Aja, who presented also on the new start, uh, which is a legacy of our Seventh-day Adventist organization. We talk about the healthy living. Now here, most of the responses have highlighted the New START program could be seen in the context of mental health and that can you know, help them revive from mental challenges and other areas. Now for our discussion, there are five important areas that I would like to present from the findings forward. Awareness about mental health is a need of the hour among Adventists and others. And uh, I think there is uh, no cross discussion against it. It is important today for every one of us to know about what is mental health all about and the sickness or the illness which comes by and what should be done. <coughs> Secondly, uh, trainings for health professionals in psychotherapeutic skills. Many a times we take for granted that pastors uh, who go through certain studies may take one or two courses on pastoral counseling and I think they are ready for doing this. Sometimes if you are not trained, uh, we can cause more damage than being good to the people who come for your help. Number three, right teachings on mental health with the word of God. That's where we become different from the other psychotherapists or the other therapists. Uh, there are certain ethical guidelines when you become a psychotherapist that you are not supposed to impose your beliefs or values into the clients who come to you. Now, if you are going to handle issues that is going to be against the belief, the ethical guideline says you are supposed to refer it to somebody else. However, as a Seventh-day Adventist or a Christian, you are supposed to always use God's word, not you as the center of focus, not therapy as the center of focus, not the system as the center of focus, but God as the center of focus in treating or in suggesting or in helping the client to go through the therapy. Next, spiritual uplift through practical life. <coughs> And also, there are various suggestions which can be spiritually guided in terms of how lifestyle could be changed, and that would help in terms of uh, uh, a psychotherapy sessions with uh, victims. Lastly, new start in the area of mental health. 
news chart basically is of more discuss in terms of physical health and uh, I remember from the time when uh, uh, small children when they learn about new start it is all about uh, uh, you know nutrition and everything comes into the physical dimension more of it of course there is a limited part to mental health but also new start could be seen from all aspects completely so that holistic uh, concept could give a different view for new start and here I recommend for mental health and there are some recommendations here. Along with pastoral counseling, trained pastors to have additional therapeutic skills when they go to institutions. This could be uh, considered or it could be studied upon so that uh, institutions can be given a chance for the pastors, when they are trained to be pastors, they can also have some therapeutic skills. Secondly, medical mission should include mental health corridor to make the mission holistic. Okay. Uh, when we hear of uh, medical mission, usually it is about uh, blood pressure and uh, uh, maybe a few other things which are connected to it. Now, you may say, I am not aware of it. Yes, if I am not aware, make me aware of it. Likewise, the Adventists. What is this medical mission all about? We have our public uh, health department head here. So, I request that it is also completely furbished with mental health mission. <coughs> educate our church members if needed train them develop and or adapt mental health programs in our institutions let the message of hope since once again uh, through programs like new start but this time with mental health initiative and those are for the church and for the general public I have mentioned few one is it is not sin to approach a counselor or a psychotherapist let us understand that if we have any challenges with our uh, mental abilities, it is okay to approach a counselor and don't think it is a sin. And in all things, let us see God as the only source of hope. And Isaiah says in Isaiah chapter 61 verse 1 to 3, The spirit of the sovereign Lord is on me because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the broken hearted to proclaim freedom for the captives and release from the darkness for the prisoners to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our Lord to comfort all who mourn and provide for those who grieve at Zion to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes the oil of joy instead of mourning and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair God has called Isaiah to do that. Likewise, God is calling each one of us to be his uh, servants to do this mental health mission. So may I call upon all of you to be part of this. And I would say further research is highly recommended in the same area as well as extension of this concept. And these are the references. And uh, you need any further contact? That's my details there. Thank you and God bless. Thank you very much, Sarandit. I'll, uh, because of time, give uh, three questions, make them brief. One, two, then I'll be there. Okay, good. Thank you. Dr. Ponya. Dr. Sikwa, okay, okay, Dr. Sikwa, then Dr. Ponya, then Pastor Zairo. Um, thank you very much for the presentation. It's on an interesting subject. Mine is actually more of a comment than a question. On your um, recommendations, you bring up the issue of New Start and how the church can look at that more holistically to include the mental health. Um, I wonder if you have observed what the church's recent revised program. The church uses celebrations model. And the reason why the church has moved to celebrations is exactly the points that you cite. If you look at celebrations, it is much more comprehensive 
when you talk about optimism, when you talk about social on the S, when you talk about the integrity, all of them, they allow that in our public health campaigns, we can actually encompass the mental health in terms of the environmental part, in terms of the optimism, in terms of the social health, and also the part that you are raising about not imposing one's beliefs on the person that you are addressing. Celebrations, again, took that into account. You find out that instead of the T that we had in New Start of trust in God, which often created a challenge for us, you actually have got belief. And when we look at belief from the church perspective, we are addressing belief in totality, which can be your belief in whichever gods that you are believing in or believe in God, the creator. Whichever way you look at it, uh, celebrations then allows for that. So I would just want to suggest that perhaps as you are reviewing and finalizing your paper, you may want to look at that because that is where the church is. It's no longer just at news that so that you are current and contextual. Thank you so much for adding that. And uh, yes, I need to look into that celebrations concept of the news that. A very small question. Is it possible for a psychotherapist to suffer from depression? Well, that's a wonderful question. No one is immune to uh, depression. Well, a doctor may feel sick and have to visit a doctor. <laughs> and we have two doctors at the back from uh, South America. Sir, uh, your doctors, do you any time feel sick? Yes, yes, okay. So I think uh, it answers that, sir. Even a psychotherapist need to be um, meeting with somebody to get some help. However, one of the additional points over there is that you kind of know why you are hitting that note. There is an additional advantage, uh, which is an advantage over the other person who may have not any idea of what it is all about. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Elder Ranjith, for the presentation. Uh, my question uh, is, uh, is, is coming from your recommendations. I see you are concerned, you focused more on the pastor's preparation toward the, his ministry to the laity. I am concerned on the process of preparing the pastor, as it were. Our philosophy of education seems to be good in terms of everything. But on the process of preparing its students, I think it is lacking a component on the aspect of the total presentation that you have made. While I was doing my, my, my BA at Solus University, I remember one of our, our students, he was from Botswana, because of too much pressure from our, from our lecturer, who was just giving assignments after assignments, which was too much for, for us as students. One of the students, eventually became mentally deranged because of too much pressure. And the professor himself even referred to it as, a, yeah, I know he could not make it, and he laughed. And instead of feeling sympathy or some, some kind of, not saying, uh, uh, reducing the weight of uh, the whole thing, the package, but at least managing students in the view of the kind of information and also the kind of load, the managing load on the students, rather than putting too much pressure until, this, or until students uh, 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 are affected or depressed. I think that component, it is lacking on the part of us as a church in terms of our philosophy of education and how we prepare students. We believe in too much work in the, instead of producing quality of people. We believe in loading too much, and even if you become too, uh, depressed, that's none of our business. We want you to, to, to have the whole package of information at the cost of your own mental health, which somehow I think we are lacking on that one. Uh, thank you, Pastor, for that observation. Uh, I bet it was theology department. Uh, well, <laughs> let me not put myself in <laughs> hot soup. Uh, what I'm saying is, uh, teachers are prepared, but not necessarily all the teachers are prepared. Okay. 
uh, when I say why not necessarily all the teachers are prepared, now whoever is teaching in the department of, I mean, let me not take any name, department, different departments, it would be nice if there is a process that they go through some education department where they learn how to teach. And I am not saying those professors, they don't know how to teach, but also, you know, there should be some additional components that could help them, uh, you know, relate to the issue that you have addressed right now. And that would uh, help. Uh, because uh, if, uh, if I have to talk on behalf of education department, we do have inclusive education, and also we talk about differentiated instruction, looking at the need of a student, how we can change and get the same things done. Uh, in a way that we help our student not to go through such a strong uh, dilemma. Thank you, sir, and thank you. Thank you very much. I won't ask him to, re to respond. He will respond later, maybe the two of us, but I'll ask it in public. One of the problems, we, one of the realities in Africa with mental health is witchcraft. People bewitch. That's one reality. Uh, I, I'll say it. I, I'm, I have a relative who stole from a relative. And when they had stolen, he stole a radio. 